Welcome to Digital Asset News, like a top stories in crypto. And I'm bringing on a bite-sized piece. It's today, just as the thumbnail suggests, agendas are shifting. And the reason why they're shifting is because cryptocurrency and digital asset market is warming up. So first up, after rejecting Bitcoin ETFs, former SEC chair Clayton joins the fight for approval. Quite odd that we've seen somebody like Jay Clayton, who has for years been against a Bitcoin ETF. And all of a sudden, because he works for a separate company that has to deal with crypto, he's all about it. On top of that, we'll take a look at another shifting agenda as Bank of America outlines key benefits of Bitcoin adoption in El Salvador, which is kind of odd because it just came out a couple months ago saying to stay away from cryptocurrencies and digital assets. Also, take a look at Michael's strategy pledges to buy more Bitcoin despite massive losses of $424 million in Q2, and that's how you invest. Also, we'll take a look at uh, founder of NFT game loses 16 crypto punks and a bunch of ETH to scammers. And this just goes to show you that it doesn't matter how long you've been in or how smart you think you are, scammers can actually get you. And here's a ways to avoid them. And then finally, I just want to make mention that uh, tonight will be me, George and James. And we'll be doing a live show over on George's show on uh, George's channel called DCA Live. We're going to do a little something different. We'll do things with cryptocurrency, but a little bit outside of our realm of what we do on our regular channel. So check that out tonight. That's at 5.30 Pacific, 7.30 Central, 12.30 AM GMT for everybody else out there. So that's what's going on. Let's take a look at what's going on into the market. So today, hey, it's a good day, Sunday, and uh, we're in the green. We're up 3%. Bitcoin is at 41,292. There's some big winners recently and uh, one of those i can just tell you is polka dot but uh we see that even ethereum 2600 wow 2671 it's up seven percent 24 hours binance coins up everything's up seven percent for uniswap sitting at number 10 and then um bitcoin cash 0.82 yeah sure whatever else but what i'm looking for specifically is polka dot it's up 16 percent in 24 hours and it's also uh, up 44% in a week. So everything that's going on with Polkadot is they are coming into their own. Those parachains are coming online. People are uh, getting into them. These different uh, organizations are bidding and they are winning. And that just means that Polkadot is going to become a uh, full-fledged service right on the heels of Ethereum. So I know when people say, you know, Polkadot and Ethereum really don't compete with, their, with each other. I don't know if that's really true. I think at some point uh, there's going to be a little bit of a battle. Uh, I do think there's enough places for everybody, but uh, it's just interesting just how much Polkadot has taken off. And as you know, Dr. Gavin Wood was also a uh, part of Ethereum uh, for the co-founder days, as well as Charles Hoskinson uh, over there at Cardano. So a lot of exciting things are happening, are going to be happening in Q3 and especially Q4. So this, my friends, is the time to be in crypto. Not investment advice, just an investment opinion. Okay, so let's uh, jump into uh, today's stop story. We talk about <laughs> Jay Clayton and what he's doing with getting an ETF approved. So to me, I, I read this and I kind of got a little angry. I got to be honest with you because, and, it, and I shouldn't, it's just an investing. Uh, but uh, when you look at these things, you really start to realize that everybody's got an agenda and everybody who says, you know, that they're like, you know, I'm just doing it for the, for the good of the people and I'm really out there for everybody. You got to look at uh, the story behind the story, really. And uh, that even falls on me too. So if you think that I'm not biased, I just uh, happen to talk about Polkadot or I just happen to talk about Bitcoin or Ethereum just because I like them. Well, it's also because I own them and uh, I make no bones about it. I mean, I'm very biased on this channel. I don't talk a lot of things about things I don't invest in. I mean, I will at some, I mean, on some certain situations, but in all in all, I'm biased. And uh, if you don't think that everybody else is, I think you're in fairy tale land. And this is going to show you uh, what's going on. So Jay Clayton joins a fight for approval. So what's going on here? Uh, as SEC Chair Gary Gensler announces his rulemaking agenda, his predecessor Jay Clayton is working in some of the very sectors and investments that his commission failed to act on during his tenure. One River Asset Management submitted a registration statement for One River Carbon Neutral Bitcoin Trust. The proposed exchange traded fund seemingly checked all the boxes on popular investing trends. And that's just it. Uh, these are all trends. And of course, right now, when people say there's no demand for cryptocurrency and we don't really see too much going on and we don't know why would anybody get into them, are you out of your mind? I mean, look, 
we live in a bubble. Let's just be honest, right? We're, we're, we're all just kind of there, but we look out of our bubble and see what the big money is doing. I mean, if you take a look at BNY Mellon with its two point something trillion assets under management, and they go to team up with Grayscale because they want to do the infrastructure and also try to get that ETF going. Well, it makes a lot of sense. There's probably a little bit of demand. That's a lot of money. That's smart money. On top of that, State Street, also with uh, like $3.1 trillion, is doing their own cryptocurrency exchange. These are some of the oldest banks and with some of the uh, highest amount of assets under management or assets under custody. So, I mean, these huge entities really kind of get what's going on. And um, I think they just all see what's going to happen. So they're trying to get behind it. So that I think is a very telling thing. But this right here, Jay Clayton, when he's talking about all these things, you're like, well, why is he so involved now? Well, here's why. So Jay Clayton is no longer a government official. Uh, he was the former uh, SEC chair. He needs to earn a living to pay for his fancy Manhattan apartment, and you're not going to get paid for being neutral on these topics. So says Adam Pritchard, professor at University of Michigan Law. People are hiring, and you need to be an advocate or endorse what it is that they're doing or lend credibility. So if you're monetizing your reputation, you're going to have to pick a side. And that's the thing. When you're a government official, you can do whatever you want. I mean, as far as like the powers that be that will allow you to do these things. So when I, when people always say, well, you know, there's no manipulation, there's not really going on. You have to understand that uh, the SEC, uh, they get chosen by Congress, right? Congress goes in there and says, okay, we, we nominate this person and we're going to vote on them. And then boom, they get in, hopefully. So they get in, but you got to remember uh, who also puts the Congress people in, in charge. Well, the people do, right? I mean, we vote for them. But on top of that, it's a bunch of donors. And who's got the most amount of money uh, in America? Well, Big Pharma, that's one of them, and, uh, and banks. So when you take a look at what's really going on, you got to take a look at whose agenda and what is doing what. So this is uh, a positive uh, story, potentially, but there's a twist. So Clayton is not the first to make this leap to the proverbial revolving door of government and private industry. There's also Ben Losky, who went from New York State's first superintendent of financial services, making rules around crypto licensing to advising Bitcoin funds. That was number one. Clayton was also preceded by former Commodity Futures Trading Chairman uh, J. Christopher Giancarlo, who went from making regulations around the classification of digital assets to being hired through his work at New York-based law firm Wilkie, Farr, and Gallagher to write briefs on behalf of Ripple. So with all these things that are going on right now and all the different people that uh, had gone from those uh, private or from those public sectors to the private sector, you would think we'd have a little more traction. Well, the track does get laid, but it does take a lot of time. So even if we think like, oh, well, Jay Clayton's in and uh, he's going to push through the ETFs and the logical thinking would be like, well, it's not about you know, what you know, it's who you know. And Jay Clayton, I'm sure, has a lot of contacts in, in those realms of, as far as the SEC. This is true, but he's got his own agenda. And Gary Gensler, who sits there, is like, look, man, you're getting paid, and uh, that's not my job. My job isn't to get paid from your company. My job is to be the chairman of the SEC, and we'll see this actually pans out. So hopefully, maybe with Gensler getting hit from different sides, it will go through. But I'm not holding my breath on, on an ETF. I've been hearing this for a long time. I think at some point it will get done because there's so many, there's so many big organizations getting into it. I'm just not uh, ecstatic about this happening like next week or next month. It'll just take time, but slow goes the boat. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And let's take a look at our next piece where we talk about the BOA crypto support. And actually, before I go into that, I would just like to say one thing, and that is about uh, agendas, which is, you know this guy right here in the background? That's Scott Menard, and he's the CIO of Guggenheim. And uh, it's one of those, those huge uh, institutional in investment corporations. And uh, he was the one that uh, had originally said that Bitcoin was go should be valued at $600,000. And that was uh, about four, four to six months ago. And all of a sudden, like a month after that, he's like, you know what? I think Bitcoin's going to go to 28K. And then he said, no, nah, I think Bitcoin's going to go to 15K. And if you take a look at what they're offering their clients in the background, of course, the lower that they can push this number. And I don't know if, if Scott really believes that to be true or if he doesn't or whatever else. But again, everybody's got an agenda. And I would think that in Guggenheim, it would uh, behoove them to uh, get in at a very low price so that their clients can think that they're geniuses when Bitcoin skyrockets up. Unfortunately, the people that listened to uh, Scott right there and sold when it went from 60 to 50 to 40, 30, and then 29, 28, and they sold or whatever else. 
Uh, today it's at 42,000, and I think we're going to see some pretty good, pretty good months. But that's neither here nor there. Just something to, to think about as far as agendas. All right. So this next one, agendas. Bank of America outlines key benefits of Bitcoin adoption in El Salvador. This is strange again, because why would Bank of America come out and say, hey, great job, El Salvador? Well, here's what's going on. The bank claims that the introduction of the world's largest crypto could potentially lower the cost of remittances. Those are payments back and forth cross borders, which represent nearly a quarter, a quarter of the tropical country's GDP. This could substantially increase the disposable income of El Salvadorans. Well, that's great. Banking the unbanked is seen as yet another advantage of Bitcoin adoption. And I want you to key on this, this next sentence. Roughly 70% of citizens in El Salvador do not have access to a bank account. Why is that so important? Why is it so important for people to have an actual bank account? Well, here's the thing. If you, are, uh, if you want to uh, advance yourself as far as like, like a business owner, first of all, it'd be great if you could put uh, your money someplace where it would have like, I don't know, FDIC insurance, so you didn't have to carry it on yourself and then worry about getting ripped off. Second of all, it'd be great if you could, I don't know, get potentially a loan and then build up your business and actually, you know, advance the business part of your life. And you could do those things with the help of a bank. Well, if 70% of, of uh, people in El Salvador can't do that, that puts them at a major disadvantage. So when people talk about how, ah, you know, Bitcoin's awful and it's used for nefarious purposes and blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? Uh, the dollar is used for the most nefarious of all purposes for the longest of time. And in all honesty, if you want to do some type of good, I think the Lightning Network that's going on with uh, in El Salvador with Bitcoin, I think is a step in the right direction. So uh, if you got another idea of how you can bank the unbanked, I'd love to hear it. And then to finish up, in March, Bank of America published a scathing report about crypto, which states that Bitcoin's only vi viable use case is price speculation. So it comes out of this. I don't know what the agenda is, but there's a reason why Bank of America went from saying, you know what, this is the only viable use is speculation and just crazy gamblers out there to going, hey, El Salvador, good job. This could really help you out. They don't just make the effort for no reason. So we'll see. I believe Bank of America is doing something with Bitcoin futures. Correct me in the, uh, in the comment section below, but uh, <laughs> wouldn't surprise me. Anyhow, let me just think about that story. And then we'll go on to our next piece, which is the ballers, micro strategy. And this is, this is a good lesson, uh, not about, I mean, it's, it's a good lesson as far as like uh, for long-term investing, but it's just a lesson about just hold on, just hold on because as time goes on, usually things do pretty well. So what's happening here? So micro strategy pledges to buy more Bitcoin despite paper loss. That's the key word. On its holdings of 424 million in quarter two, that's a huge loss, right? Well, here's what's happening. Business intelligence and mobile software firm MicroStrategy has pledged to buy more Bitcoin despite reporting impairment losses of 424 in Q2. So just remember, April, May, June, they lost in quarter two, okay? That's all that really it really comes out to be. This is what it means. This is only a paper loss based on the price of Bitcoin at the end of the quarter and does not reflect a realized loss. So this is the big thing. Well, two things. First of all, I've actually uh, just looking at quarter to quarter. Yeah, they're probably down, but they've been buying for quite some time. I think they're still op up overall. And the big thing is this, is that you don't lose if, you, if things just go down. I'm not going to tell you uh, my paper loss <laughs> from... Uh, gosh, March, April, and May, when things were doing pretty well, and then June, and then July, it, it, it took quite a bit of a loss. And um, because I already gone through this multiple, multiple, multiple times, uh, the first one is 2017 and 2018, it didn't really phase me. And I know people are out there going, you know what you got to do is you got to trade. You got to trade, and you got to time that market, and you got to get in and get out. And you can do that. I got no problem with that. But I'm just not that guy. Me personally, I got a lot of things going on. I would just like to just invest dollar cost average, set and forget it, and have a lot less stress in my life than always looking at the damn uh, portfolio and going, oh, this is down or that's down. I'd look at it every so often. I mean, I'll be on, I mean, I look at it every day because I'm with you guys. But uh, in all honesty, I just look at it and like, I don't care what it does today. I don't give a damn what it does in a month or two months. I just know that in one, three, five, ten years, it's going to be worth 
a boatload. And that's really what it comes down to. Again, not investment advice, just invest in opinion. That is my opinion, my opinion only, but that's what I got. Let me just think about that in the comments section and let's move on to our last couple pieces where, ah, this is a hurtful story actually. So the founder of NFT game uh, loses 16 crypto punks and a bunch of ETH to a scammer. Here's what's happening. A scammer confusingly named Crypto Punks Bot posted in the Crypto Punks Discord server offering NFT investors the chance to win 10 of the elusive NFT avatars to celebrate the project's 40th anniversary. Apparently, um, these uh, crypto punks <laughs> are worth a ton of money. So if you got a couple, uh, you're you know pretty much doing pretty well. So this is what happened. The link directed to larvalabs.io, a convincing copy of larvalabs.com, the project behind CryptoPunks. The site then had a pop-up that looked like MetaMask. The pop-up said that MetaMask security had been compromised and requested Stasis. That's the uh, uh, name of the person who does this NFT game. They wanted his seed phrase to restore access. Anyone who has access to the 12-word phrase can drain the MetaMask wallet off funds. So here's the thing. Just remember this. If anybody asks for your 12-word phrase, your seed phrase, your mnemonic phrase, whatever you want to call it, uh, don't give it to them. I don't care if it's somebody from Ledger. I don't care if it's any, I don't care if you get an email from me. And guess what? There's a scammer uh, named digitalassetnew at gmail.com, not digitalassetnews at gmail, who actively tries to get people to sign up for some trading thing that they have. I don't do trading. But um, this just goes to show you that it doesn't matter where you get it from. Just here's the, here's the basic principle. Always try to go to the legit the uh the main website this one's tough though i mean larvalabs.io to larvalabs.com very convincing try to go to the the official at least the uh, official website as best you can find it and then if you get past that and you screw that part up just don't give anybody your, your 12 word mnemonic phrase because that's essentially just giving them your keys like here's the key to my house go right in take whatever you want and uh that's the big thing so if you screw up one thing uh, just don't screw up the second part and you should be okay. And here's the big thing I want you to remember. Stasi unwittingly sent his wallet seed phrase a scammer. He states there was zero critical thinking and this is beyond idiotic. The punks and ETH was quickly gone before I could do anything. Today, the scammer sold five crypto punks for 140 on ETH, 385,000. And lastly, this is the big thing. Stasi's been in crypto since 2017 and considered himself familiar with the ways investors are swindled out of their crypto. He chalks his laugh, lack of judgment or lapse of judgment at the time down to being burnt out, tired, and frustrated. So look, we've all had it happen, okay? We've all had this issue where we were approached by someone or something's happened or we've gotten an email or something like that. And most of the times we've gotten around it and we haven't gotten screwed out of our crypto. Great, good for us, right? And then some, something like this, and this is guy Stasi has been around for, I mean, as long as I've been around. So he knows all the ins and outs and he was just tired one day. So anytime you hear anybody who go, man, I got, I got scammed. I got this and that. Don't automatically say you're an idiot and I can't believe you lost it. That's so callous and so backwards thinking. Just try to give them some support. Tell them that it's going to be, you know what? Say, hey, you messed up, uh, but try not to do this again. Hopefully it wasn't too much. And don't ridicule people because when you do something like that, it's like, this, it can happen to anybody. I've, I know a lot of smart people that got scammed out, a lot. And uh, it's just, unfortunately, it's commonplace. And again, just if you're, if you're tired or cranky or you just don't really get it, just stay away from trying to do any of these types of giveaways or whatever else. They're all scams anyhow, and that's what it comes down to. So that's really it. So that is it for today. And I would like to talk about, lastly, uh, we've got... Uh, me, George, and James, George from CryptoZoros and James from Invest Answers. Uh, we're going to do uh, a live show. It's supposed to be every week now. Um, we're just going to be talking about different subjects. It's, it'll be crypto and digital asset related, but uh, we're not going to talk about the news. We all do the news. Uh, we're not going to talk about a lot of things that we talk about on a regular show because why would you go over there and watch it? It's going to be a little bit different things. Talking about... Um, just various topics that uh, we've come up with, I think that we, that could help the average cryptocurrency enthusiast and uh, investor. So check that out. Uh, once I get a link, I'll put it on the Twitter, 
on on my my Twitter account. Also, just follow me at News Asset. A lot of things I talk about on this show, I talk about on Twitter. So uh, just check that out. And that is it for today. So look, if you made it all the way end, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. And uh, that is it for today. So if you got time, I'll see you over on George's channel. But uh, that's it for right now. I'll see you on the next one.